As the MMORPG genre shifts more and more towards solo ability, one of the decisions the developers of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen have made in an attempt to stand out is to put an emphasis on grouping, to provide a rich experience for those who prefer cooperative gameplay. But for many people, that sounds like more of a time commitment than they're able to make, and others prefer to solo exclusively. So it begs the question, can a game really satisfy these different playstyles without stretching itself too thin? It's no secret that MMORPG stands for Massively Multiplayer Online Role-Playing Game, but sometimes we hear that so often that we forget what it really means. Massively Multiplayer. A lot of so-called MMORPGs don't seem to embrace their massively multiplayer roots anymore. Companies realized over the years that, in fact, a lot of people like the ease of just logging in and immediately jumping into soloing and feeling accomplished without having to risk being yelled at by random people on the internet. So they started designing more and more content to accommodate that style, to the point where now there are very few meaningful experiences for people who genuinely want to group. And so when there is a game that puts the MM back in MMORPG, like Pantheon Rise of the Fallen, many people who prefer the grouping style will react instinctively by trying to protect that from any influence that might make it like all the other solo-oriented MMOs. Too often though, that turns into saying things like, Well, if you want to solo, just go play a single-player game! MMOs are for grouping! However, if you're the type of person who likes to gatekeep and dictate how other people play a certain game, you're doing more damage than you realize to that game that you claim to care so much about. There are lots of reasons why someone might decide to solo in an MMORPG. Here's just four quick examples. Number one, just starting out. Everybody begins a game as a noob. Maybe you just found out about an MMO and you don't personally know anyone who plays it, but you're still really interested, so you log in. Are you going to want to reach out to total strangers to get help killing your very first mob? Probably not. Even the thought of that probably induces anxiety in a lot of people. It's nice to have some space to figure things out first and determine if you even want to keep playing. Number two, restrictions. Maybe you want to just mess around for half an hour before going to work. Or maybe you're playing at work, or at home with your baby on your lap. There's lots and lots of reasons why you might not be able to fully commit to a group experience because you don't want to let them down if you have to step away. Maybe this is the only way you can play, or maybe you just play like this some of the time. Number three, other players are content. Whether you prefer to do your own thing some of the time or all of the time, it can be entertaining to just observe other players without ever engaging with them. Even the best NPC AI can't replicate human behavior because humans are so dynamic. You can actually learn a lot just by watching what other people are doing or reading what they're saying in general chat. Number four, introverted. Maybe you like group content, but you're hesitant to be the one to put the group together. And so until someone else puts a group together for something you want to do, you just solo. Because remember, soloing is actually the default condition of all players in any MMORPG. The moment you log in, you are alone. You're solo until you find a group. And there's nothing wrong with being an introvert. I'm an introvert myself. But I do have to say that I've also found that if you want to group, just taking the initiative and learning those leadership skills has made me a lot happier and more productive in the long run. But everybody's different. The real world is full of different types of people, and that translates into our virtual worlds. Although as we can see, a desire to solo in an MMORPG is a matter of not only personality, but also the circumstances of that day. Aside from the fact that it's nice to have the option to do both depending on the situation, soloing in an MMO surrounded by real people is a completely different feeling from playing a single player game, which can feel very cold and lonely sometimes. So the best virtual worlds, in my opinion, will be the ones that allow for a wide variety of styles where you can approach it however you want to, alone or with friends. Back in 2019, I made a video titled, Will You Be Able to Solo in Pantheon Rise of the Fallen? 
It was actually the last video I made before Brad McQuaid tragically passed away. And the topic has come up again recently in Visionary Realms Parting the Veil podcast, and I think it's worthwhile to check back in to see if their philosophy has changed at all since 2019, or maybe try to get some new details. So if you haven't watched my soloing video from 2019, or just don't remember it, I'd suggest you go back and watch that first, and then come back here to see what's new. One of the standing beliefs uh, when it comes to the kind of of game Pantheon is going to be is that it is going to be kind of a, a group focused game. And a lot of people hear that and they think grouping is the only way you're going to be able to play it. They hear that and they think forced grouping and Pantheon will not be a forced grouping game on the whole. So I want to just dig into that a little bit and explain, you know, what we mean when we say group centric and what kind of door that leaves open for the solo player and even the small group experience. So when we say group centric, we are looking at building a game with a saturation, a majority saturation of content that you will need a group of adventurers that are, you know, able to work together as a team to overcome. That is where we believe that the best representation of the heart and soul of this game, the experience of playing Pantheon is found. And we've had that affirmed by our internal VIP pre-alpha testers very strongly that when when a full group comes together or even you know a smaller group comes together and plays Pantheon as a group it is the fullness of the experience kind of the pinnacle of that and so that that's really you know still very much the heart and soul of our game we are building content that supports and in that case certain content you know depending on the challenge and the difficulty of it will require a, a group of players. But that does not mean that we are uh, not considering the smaller group and even the solo player experience as well. So yes, while grouping is the epitome of what Pantheon has to offer, this isn't all or nothing. You won't need to get a group together in order to do anything. And that's nothing new, that's been the goal for years. Although through testing, some refinements have been made to better realize that goal. For example, as I mentioned earlier, one of the primary reasons people solo is because they're just starting out. And for those just starting out in Pantheon, even if you enjoy grouping on the whole, you may want to take some time alone to get yourself acquainted. So for the, for the character that is playing by themselves, what you're going to find is that for the first five levels or so, you will be relatively capable of taking on things that are equal level to you. Now, you know, even in those first five levels that, you know, in, uh, if you get level five and you're fighting level five, it's going to get it's going to get pretty dicey and it's only going to you know increase from there. And the point there is that that will drive players who are wanting to play by themselves or who need to play by themselves because of time frame availability. You know, they they're, they want to find a group, but they can't for, for whatever reason. Around that level five mark, you're going to you're going to learn very quickly that you, you're going to need to start looking for lower level NPCs compared to you to more safely be able to take those on and of course that's going to mean less experience per kill and and so on but that that's talking about the overland overland areas so when i'm you know traversing on the lands outside of the starting city or moving into the next you know the adjacent zone if you will and i'm i'm starting to kind of scout around a little bit but you might run into like a small group type content area as you're moving around the overworld and then of course you've got your dungeons you've got your you know major bosses and, and other things you know, Hounder Cave, for example, is is not a place you're really going to want to try to go solo unless you're significantly higher level and, you know, probably have some good gear. Maybe you could come back to that area and, and fare reasonably well. But that's kind of the breakdown of what we're, we're looking for. That provides some good clarity as to what a solo player can expect in Pantheon. There'll be certain areas, particularly dungeons, that you just can't solo. And in areas where you can solo, you'll need to have your wits about you. You're looking at slower progression compared to a group because you'll mostly be fighting things that are lower level than you. And there's also the factor of recovery time. You'll be casting more spells and taking more damage than if you were in a group. And because classes are designed for group interdependency, you might not have access to buffs that allow you to recoup health and mana quickly. Which brings up the fact that your effectiveness in soloing will be largely dependent on what class you choose. Some classes will be straight up better at soloing than others. 
What's ironic about diehard group players claiming that MMORPGs have always been about grouping is that soloing was actually not uncommon at all in some of the earliest MMORPGs, like EverQuest for example. Hardly a day would go by where you wouldn't see an enchanter charm soloing, or a druid quad kiting, or a bard swarm kiting, let alone a necromancer or magician just soloing with their pets. And the best part is that a lot of that was a result of emergent behavior. Quote, emergent behavior is a behavior of a system that does not depend on its individual parts, but on their relationship to one another. Thus, emergent behavior cannot be predicted by examination of a system's individual parts, unquote. What this means is that you can't totally predict which classes will or will not be able to solo, or how good they'll be at soloing, because in many cases, a class's ability to solo depends on the creativity of the players behind it, experimenting with different abilities and strategies on different mobs in different areas. Game designers didn't teach people how to quad kite or swarm kite. They probably didn't even know it was possible when they were first designing those classes. And that's the beauty of games like this. The best players will always find a way to surprise you with what's possible. But as we've discussed many times before on this channel, just because something worked in an MMO 20 years ago doesn't mean that the best thing to do is to just copy that formula exactly. It's easy to remember the good times, but whether you realize it or not, the way you think about MMORPGs now as a whole is drastically different from back then. So not everything translates well to the current era. There's always room for improvement. Trying to go back in time doesn't do anyone any favors. It's 2022. Life is chaotic for many people. Most of us just don't have as much free time as we used to, so it's understandable to not want to spend a lot of game time just trying to get in a group. And on top of that, for better or for worse, interacting with people online is part of our day-to-day -day life now, and that has forever changed the dynamics of communities in online worlds. I'll be you know, what kind of experience players had back in the earliest days of MMORPGs, back kind of in, in the realm of time that the internet itself was still kind of a new concept. The, the, the idea of being able to connect and chat with people across the world in a virtual space was still very novel and just captivating uh, to so many. That did a lot of work for the, the building of that social structure because it was so new and people were so hungry for it on the whole. And you didn't need these robust tools or systems that helped bridge the gap from some of that social connection making because it was just, I mean, even just being in proximity of another player, seeing another virtual avatar running around, knowing it was another player and being able to just talk to them like that in and of itself propelled so much of that social dynamic. Whereas today, you know, we're we're two decades removed from some of those earliest experiences. Online interactions are not novel. They're rote, they're routine, they're daily. The text messaging that goes on, you know, in just about every handheld device, the video messaging, the there, there's just so much of that happening that we're talking about a culture that uh, is used to those things being very prompt and very available. And so part of the adjustment, for example, is thinking through, you know, what is making a group centered game look like today? Um, you know, part of it looks like developing more robust tools, um, looking for group tools. And, you know, we're not going with like an automatic dungeon finder, or raid finder kind of a tool, but there's a lot of room to improve something like a looking for group tool to make, you know, some of those connections a little bit easier to make. I can't talk about soloing without also talking about the players who want to group but only have a couple hours a day to play, and so assume that means they'll automatically be relegated to soloing all the time in Pantheon. I'll be honest, despite how much I talk about Pantheon, I'm probably not going to spend as much time playing it as you think I will. I just can't play 8 or 10 or 12 or more hours a day like I did in college. I've got a full-time job and a wife now. There may be some days that I want to just solo, and I'm glad I'll have that option. But ultimately, grouping is where my heart lies. I love cooperative gameplay, which is why I'm glad that there will be tools like this to expedite the process of connecting with other players. The, the current design as it stands is, uh, it's just to give more tools. Um, so it, it, it's to give an abundance of optional data uh, to include or exclude, uh, whether you're searching for a group or searching for a group member. Uh, it has a lot of fields and options that 
you don't normally see in MMOs. Um, I haven't anyway. Um, so with this current design, you can be more selective than in almost any game that I've seen, or, or as broad and as random as you want. So it kind of covers the whole spectrum. Um, in terms of communicating, there's it's a small thing, but there's even in the design anyway. There's there's even a little button to click to to open up a dialogue of the of the person that you're or one of the people that you're currently considering. This social tool should cut down on the time spent looking for a group while still allowing genuine connections to be made, as opposed to an automatic dungeon finder like you would see in WoW or other MMOs. And don't even get me started on how those completely shrink the world if it will also teleport you to the location, because that's another video for another day. But even with these tools, if you still want to solo in Pantheon, go for it. I can't wait to see all the unique strategies you come up with to make it happen. If you don't want to be out of the loop about Pantheon's development moving forward, hit the subscribe button now because this channel is dedicated to following it closely. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know that I never ask you to donate to Pantheon's crowdfunded development. Everyone has different financial situations and level of risk tolerance, so what you do with your money is up to you. However, if you do make the decision to pledge or upgrade your pledge, and my videos have in any way informed that decision, I'd appreciate it if you'd list me as a referral when you get your post-pledge survey. My account is bazgrimtv at gmail.com. That helps me know that I'm covering the things that you want to know about. So until the next video, stay curious and adventure on.